Hi, my name is Najat Hamza. I am an Oromo activist. I wanted to talk to the Ethiopian government about some simple things that they neglected to, you know, abide by. Whether a government is dict dictatorship in or democratic or whatever form it is, the first and foremost function of any government is to provide peace and security uh, to the people it supposedly governs. Uh, when we look at what has been transpiring in the last couple of years, not that it ever stopped, um, we see a government or group of people that call themselves a government inciting um, violence among people, attacking people for, you know, asking for their legitimate rights, um, having anything to say about the government can land anyone in jail in Ethiopia. It has been that way, not only for Oromo people, but for any person or persons who could oppose uh, the government, whether ideologically or in written forms, even social media posts can land anyone in Ethiopia in jail. And this failing regime that has refused to acknowledge people's questions of, you know, human rights to be protected and respected, their safety and security to be provided for, and, you know, to just basically offer what any basic government resources should be, which is, um, you know, to bring about order um, among the people it governs. However, what we see is um, the looting of resources with the government on top, while the you know greater population of Ethiopia in general and Oromo in particular suffers in their hands, with artificially you know managed hungers um, and communicable diseases and insights of violence using religion, uh, different ethnicities, even our you know painful history with other ethnic groups that we had in that um, country. Let's look at the basic purpose of any government, um, in any country really, uh, whatever capacity they function under. Um, as I said, one is to preserve order, and two is to defend that country against external or internal forces. Um, that second point is funny because the internal forces that Ethiopia and the Ethiopian people, and Oromo in particular, are supposed to be protected from is actually the government in power. Um, and then, you know, distribution of income and resources. And we also look at that as a laughable um, a statement for Ethiopian government because what it did in the last 26 years is loot resources from all over Ethiopia and Oromia and to their very few um, people on top. While the general population suffered from malnutrition, unavailability of food, medical care, um, education um, to the fullest extent, and the various other resources that any government was supposed to provide. However, um, people have survived in that manner for a long time. And then finally, in the last couple of years, we see two of the major ethnic groups, one of which is the Oromo, um, decided to protest against this brutal dictatorial government. And because of that uh, resistance, now their authority is being called to question. Um, and they have lost all, all forms of, um, you know, kind of like a, an upper hand in narrative that they have created in the past 25 years about Ethiopia being, um, you know, the rising power of an economic amazement in East Africa. While we have a backdrop of over 20 million people um, you know, in, in uh, you know, suffering in, from malnutrition and famine. And so what they have resorted to now is trying to pitch um, one ethnic group against another. They have tried that with our, um, you know, Amhara people versus Ormo people when the protest was uh, first started in 2014. And we recognize that as a divide and conquer uh, tactic of the regime and that was rejected from both sides. And so they had to go back to the drawing boards. But now, all of a sudden, um, communities that have survived together and coexisted in, in, in that country for centuries are all of a sudden being depicted as enemies uh, when it comes to our Somali brothers and sisters and Oromo 
um, in the recent border attacks um, along the Oromian um, region. What this tells us is a desperate regime that has fallen in all forms and trying to buy some time and trying to um, you know, create an opportunity for them to behave like somebody that is um, you know, governing when we know in reality they are the ones that are instigating these things. Um, so basically, the TPLF-led regime in Ethiopia is playing devil's advocate, um, you know, kind of pitching brothers against brothers and benefiting from, you know, what happens, the chaos, uh, which is funny because they're supposed to protect both of these regions and both of these population from any harm, uh, whether it's coming from, ex you know, external forces or among themselves. It's true. Somalis and Oromo people um, coexisted. That means we might have, uh, you know, a quarrel some issues on some resource sharing materials um, on the border when it comes to the pasturing, you know, farmlands and water resources and what have you. But we have managed to diffuse those things in a communal and family-based manner um, so far um, in all of our existence. And so uh, this, uh, you know, upstaging of a non-existing narrative of hate between Somalis and Oromo people are very far from the truth. And I want to talk to our, our um, Somali brothers and sisters to recognize this for what it is, which is um, a last attempt to a rotten, brutal, you know, murderous regime that is using our people as a shield to stay in power. Because we know uh, in, in, in recent memory that the Ogaden region is, you know, the most attacked, ethnically cleansed, um, region in Ethiopia by the TPLF regime. So I am just perplexed as I sit here and trying to understand the current narrative of how Somalis and Oromos are all of a sudden, um, you know, arch enemies and they're there playing the angel, um, you know, trying to say that we are killing each other from both sides. For what? We are both marginalized communities. We are both communities that are targeted by this mafia group that calls itself government. So when we look at that 25 years, um, when we look at economic wise, um, politi political wise, um, what, do, what did we gain as, as the Somalis and Oromos? Nothing really. Um, actually what we have gained is um, we had our humanity stripped from us. We have lost our basic decency as people. We have suffered great violence in their hands. And so the fact that they are actually flaming this issue way out of proportion should tell us that they are the driving forces behind this nonsense. And we, Oromo people, and I know Oromos and other ethnic groups in Ethiopia, we are not looking for blood or violence. We are looking for a peaceful coexistence where everybody's opinion and the rule of law and democracy you know, reigns all over from top to bottom so that our community, so that our future and our country could have a prosperous future and could coexist as it had done so before. The only outsider between us right now, and it always has been in the last 25 years, is a Tigrayan-led minority government. If you want to know what an Oromo people is, how peace-loving people are, you should just look at how we handled even our perpetrators of violence from the past. We have never taken revenge on any ethnic group. We have never invited violence in Ethiopia or on our homeland. Um, and for our Oromo, Oromo and Somali um, people, one thing is for sure, the Ethiopian government or the regime will soon fall. It will fail and it's already failing, but what what remains is us as a community, as people who coexist some years from now, long before I'm gone and you're gone and generations to come. So we have to remember that we cannot be played against each other for a failing regime while we have a lasting relationship to uphold in that region. And um, so the violence that they're talking about, they're the mastermind of that. They're known to lead with violence and, and, and suppression and all forms of, you know, illegitimate ways of governing. Uh, what they have, what they have done is actually a sign of 
a failing regime. Any failing regime goes to the drawing board and looks at what cards they haven't played and what cards they have played so far. They have tried the religious card and failed. They have tried to play to our historical trauma in other parts and failed on that. And now they're coming back in this issue of pitching one community against another to gain power and to gain legitimacy. And if you want to look at the proof of who is driving this narrative and this nonsense, all you have to do is look at all their insiders and their, you know, people in power in the TPLF regime led, you know, mafia group. It's just look at how they are inciting this and, you know, blowing it out of proportion day to day. And I don't know about you, but what kind of a government would come into a community, even if there is a conflict, and say to, to one community, look, over there, that those people are targeting you. You should defend yourself. No government, legitimate or illegitimate, would ever do that. Because any government's responsibility, as I said in the beginning, is to ensure the safety and security of any community that they preside over. With that said, even if there was an issue, which there is none, between these communities, as the government, they're supposed to come in and play a role that brings peace and order and restore peace and order and not find it to their political advantage while our people from both sides lose lives and limbs and you know get displaced and what have you. So before we react as Oromos or as Somalis, I urge you to think very, very simply who benefits from these things. Certainly it's not the Oromos or it's not the Somalis or it's not the population really. This is about power, and this is about control, and this is about the last attempt of the TPLF rage, you know, led regime to gain some sort of time and, and power in their delusional minds. And we are here to say we, have, we are people who are going to be here long before they're gone. We're going to remain neighbors because you can't move countries or countries that are attached to one another, but we can get rid of the, you know, the regime together and so that we can usher in the sorts of stuff that we've been asking for the last 25 years. The rule of law, respect for human rights, democracy, and equality in that country. Whether you are Oromo, Somali, Amara, whatever it is, that they're the ones who are benefiting uh, from the economic rights narrative or whatever else they're conjuring up in, in their backyard um, on Finfinne. So my last message to anyone who's listening is this. Oromo people have never um, attacked anyone. We have never called for violence in our existence. All we ever wanted and we still do is that we as human beings deserve to be left alone on our own land, on our own country, to be just, you know, a, a person in the 21st century who are free from any influence or who are not going hungry from the resources they already have, who don't have a place to stay when you have a country that caters to all. And so, um, in conclusion, um, Oromo people have accommodated the Somali people in their homes. Um, they have welcomed them with open arms. Uh, we have existed together. We have been helping each other up until this point, and no political cards or game should ever change that. And that is the reality, and no uh, propaganda narrative or falsehood is going to ever create a rift between us that becomes um, hard to dismantle later. Remember, as I said, this is one of the signs of a failing regime. When they come down to this level, there isn't really anything left. So when we know that, we as a community are going to exist together long after they're gone. And it's in our best interest for both communities to come together and recognize this game for what it is, and let the TBLF and the Abdi Ilays of the world fight each other and create whatever chaos they need to create elsewhere because it's not in my homeland and it shouldn't be in your homeland that we entertain violence as a political game. And this is my message, my only message in a video live because I didn't know what else to do. I am watching this nonsense all the way from Minnesota, um, you know, in unfolding um, and, and, and just looking at the utter chaos that these people are creating among these two communities. And please, please remember, the only common enemy we share, the only destabilizing force in the Horn of Africa 
is the TPLF regime. And the soon as they get, you know, the soon as, as soon as we get rid of them, peace, democracy, equality, and coexistence and harmony will return in that region. Until then, we have to remember always at every corner who is pulling what string, what string and for what reason. And if we could do that in that simple term, if we could do that, we would not fall victim to their propaganda, to their narrative, or to their creation of chaos. Let them be the actor in their own chaos. We don't have time for that. We still continue to fight for the rights of our people, each one of our people who deserve to live in dignity and respect. And thank you for listening to me and for the TPLF Mafia. Try elsewhere. This isn't going to work just like your other failed cards. Thank you.